What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to the full 90. It is finally time for another season of the Premier League. The football season is finally here and kicking. And that's pretty good for me because the cricket season recently hasn't been too kind to me. Hence what happened to my face. So you don't have to ask about it. It was a sports injury. We move on. Take these headphones off. And let's go. I've missed you. I've missed doing this today in the video. It is the eagerly anticipated Premier League predictions video where I go through from 1 to 20 where I think each team is going to place in the Premier League. And there are some certain positions in here that I'm really torn on. And let's be real, no one gets it right. There's always teams that massively outperform expectations. So I could randomly say Southampton will finish ninth this season and that might actually happen. But until it does, you get roasted in the comments for it. So on the one hand, you could go safe with what the general consensus is what the odds tend to say and on the other you can throw some curveballs in there but none of them are ever going to be right and that is the beauty of the Premier League so please do before we go any further drop a like and leave your predictions from 1 to 20 who you think is going to finish where in the Premier League and why not leave a few rogue predictions because that might be where you get the spot on ones I've got some rogue predictions in here that's for sure so let's get to it. I'm going to make my way up the Premier League table, kicking off with 20th. I've gone with Bournemouth and this is tough for me because I'm local to Bournemouth. I've seen Bournemouth play in League 2, League 1, never actually in the Premier League or the Championship, but it just shows how local I am. Bournemouth is very, very close to me and I just don't think they're going to be able to really make a stamp on the Premier League. Even the season they did have a good run of a few years under Eddie Howe in the Premier League but they always still look like a team that most teams could beat they pull up a, pull off a crazy result against you know a big team here and there I believe it was 2019 when they beat Manchester United I think it was November might have been November 1st you might have to fact check me on that I'm doing that from memory and they beat the big team but Bournemouth are the kind of team that do lose to the teams that maybe they should be getting points from the likes of Southampton's Everton's Palace they'll lose those games and those are the games they need to be getting points from to really secure their survival this season in the Premier League and I just don't think they're strong enough I think they will get the odd surprise result here but I've got to pick a 20th so I've gone with Bournemouth 19th I hope I'm wrong but I've gone with Fulham. I hope Alexander Mitrovic finally breaks into the Premier League and has the season that everyone's praying that he has. He obviously absolutely smashed it, broke all the records in the championship last year, but he's just one of those players. He needs to be in a league between the Premier League and the championship along with Norwich and then he can just play them every week and score goals because it just seems that in the Premier League he hasn't quite got it. I, re I could see him scoring 10 goals, which isn't bad, but I don't see him doing much more than that. He's definitely capable, but he always seems to not live up to his potential in the Premier League and Fulham, when they have been in the Premiership, they, they tend to struggle defensively and teams like Man City, Liverpool, even Arsenal, they take, take a liking to Fulham and just kind of tear them apart. So I've gone for Fulham them in 19th now the likelihood is that all three teams that will get relegated are the three teams that get promoted but i've tried not to do that here and i was torn between two teams and i took a last minute u-turn here and i've put brentford in the 18th position whilst i think they had a brilliant season last year they played some great football it wouldn't surprise me if brentford have been somewhat found out by other teams and certainly won't be taken as lightly by other teams and of course they have lost christian erickson who's gone to manchester united who was instrumental in securing Brentford's you know high finish in the Premier League last year so I could see them slip a bit teams will fancy them and I'm just gonna shade Brentford to go down I was very very close and initially put this team in 18th I've gone 17th place though for Southampton my goodness they had a diabolical end to the season but partly part of me is thinking you can't read too far into that in the sense that they were safe relatively early on and even though it looks like they almost got relegated they were on the beach it seemed and they weren't really playing their best they do need some reinforcements especially up front and i don't think they've really got that so although i think james ward prowse i assume is going to be staying with them i think they are going to struggle and they really just need to stay up and hopefully they can reinforce in january and in the next summer because at the moment it's not looking great for Southampton 16th then I've gone with Nottingham Forest I do think there's going to be one of the three teams that does have a season that stays up even if the odds suggest that all three will go down and on paper the three weakest teams currently in the Premier League are the three promoted from the championship but there's always a bounce and I've seen Forest play a few times and they look ready they look decent and you know especially in the cup run they've given good teams good games I think they'll be up for it they're uh, they're, they're a historical Premier League club. They're a historical European powerhouse. They, I think they 
can have the season that sees them stay in the Premier League and potentially keep it going into the next season. Speaking of keeping it going into the next season, up by the skin of their teeth, 15th place, I've gone with Leeds. This one is difficult. They do have, they've had injury issues throughout last year. Will Patrick Banford finally play more games this year? You'd expect so. I think having survived that shaky first year, uh, or that shaky year in the Premier League, I think they will be able to do it again and just secure themselves a 15th place finish. They're not going to set the world on fire. They'll have games that, that end 5-3. Who knows which way it'll go, but they'll have exciting football and I think they will be able to stay in the Premier League and that'll only help their efforts into maintaining Premier League status for a longer period of time. 14th place, this is a difficult one and I feel like I'm being quite harsh here. 14th place, I've gone with Crystal Palace. I could see them getting 11th, 12th, something like that. But I look above them and see the teams up there. And it was more an issue of I had to put someone there. So I've gone with Crystal Palace. I like what Vieira is doing. I think the individual talent in Crystal Palace actually exceeds the total output from the team. I think some of the individuals Crystal Palace have got are absolute ballers. And I think they definitely can do better than 14th place. I have no fear that they'll be relegated. And uh, I could see them that, you know, they'll be pushing for 50 points. Maybe feel just short, a full full just short, 45, something like that. But I've gone for Crystal Palace in 14th. 13th place, I've gone with Everton. This is, it's so difficult. So difficult. They rallied themselves together. They managed to survive from the relegation scrap that they were drawn into last season. And I do think having survived that, there'll be a little bit of a bounce and uh, they'll be able to stay comfortably in the Premier League. I think I could see some early on results not going their way and then maybe being in the lower half relegation, perhaps even part of the table at the beginning of the season. This is without me even checking their fixtures. They might have a really kind fixture list, but I could see them struggling at the beginning. There'll be people saying, oh, is this the year Everton could actually go down? But at the end of the day, Everton have been in the Premier League longer than pretty much anyone. So I think they're going to stay up still. I've gone for 13th place. 12th place, I've gone with the mighty Villa. Uh, I've gone with Aston Villa in 12th place in the sense that I think they're, they're a decent team. They're a solid team. They don't pick up points where they should, but then they randomly pick up points where you don't expect. And again, I think it's just a matter of I think they'll be slightly more consistent than the teams lower than them, but the teams above them that are yet to come in have proven a little bit more to me over the last couple of seasons. And one of them being the 11th place team that I have picked in Brighton. I'm not entirely sure. I don't think Cucurella has officially gone to Manchester City, but I'm pretty sure that is the goal. And without him, that is definitely a weakness. But Brighton have been playing well and they do play well together as a team. And even though someone like Cucurella has been instrumental in some of the attacking play that they provided in the last season, I do think they would cope without him better than, say, Leeds coped without Banford. I think Brighton can, as a unit, make up the difference. It might not be the most uh, clinical football. It might be pretty to look at at times, but they're, and they maybe underwhelm in terms of XG. Like they get a lot of XG, but don't score the goals. I think Brighton will have a decent season. I think they'll just miss out on a top half finish because again, the top 10 are pretty stacked. And 10th place, I was considering putting them in the bottom half, but I've gone with 10th Wolves. They've had good finishes in the last few Premier League years. They're a well-established unit. A little bit boring at times. It does have to be said. You have to ask yourself where on earth the goals are going to come from a lot of the time. But I do think Wolves defensively are good enough. Uh, and defence is very important. Particularly when avoiding relegation and avoiding slipping down the Premier League. You would want to lean towards a better defence than a better offence. And that is part and parcel really why Wolves finish so high above Leeds. Leeds are more attacking than Wolves, for example. Uh, but way worse defensively. And Wolves finished a lot stronger. So I'm going to go for Wolves in 10th. Ninth place, I've gone with Newcastle, which is an interesting one. I think they're a really, really good team. And although they've got new players, they've got reinforcements, they survived very easily in the Premier League. Eddie Howe has got a massive bounce going. They've got the new owners. They've got the money. They've got the funds. I think it's outrageous to think maybe they could get in the top four with the quality of opposition that they currently face. And they are still a team that might struggle against the likes of a Wolves, a Brighton. I could see them losing randomly to someone like Forrest. As well as I could see them beating Man United at St. James's Park. Something like that. So they're still very much in transition. They'll be safe. I think they'll be happy with a top 10 finish. They wouldn't want to sit around the 9th, 10th mark for too long like Wolves. They'd want to progress. But for the first full season under the new ownership and new regime, I think 9th 
it's difficult to expect much more from them. Maybe an 8th or a 7th place finish, but that does depend on, I think, teams above them that I'm about to talk about, perhaps putting in less of a performance. 8th place, I've gone with Leicester. I think a lot of people are sleeping on them. I think they're a really good team, and they had a poor run last season, and they had some injuries. They had European football. They had all that. I do think Leicester are going to do fairly well this year. I was very tempted to put them above West Ham, who spoiled their seventh, uh, but I didn't. I settled on Leicester in eighth. They're a good team. They're a really good team. I think they just need to tweak a few issues at the back and hopefully they won't have a long, long list of injuries like they have done recently. But I've gone with them eighth and West Ham seventh. Uh, I think, although West Ham will have European football, I think they've got a good squad. It looks like they're holding on to Declan Rice. It looks like they're holding on to Antonio. They've got Suchek as well, who is in my fantasy team. I'm finally giving fantasy football a good stab this year. I've never really done it before, but I'm getting involved this year. And Suchek is, I think, my only West Ham player in my team. And he, I think he's currently on the bench because they start against City. But it is what it is. I think I'm going to go for West Ham to finish seventh. I am going to go for Manchester United next in sixth. Not quite sure what's going on at the club, to be honest. They have got Christian Eriksen. I think that's a good signing. Who knows what's happening with Cristiano Ronaldo? He wants to leave. No one wants him. And I think he probably would have had a guaranteed out before he came out and said, I don't want to play for Manchester United because there's nothing, nothing worse than saying, I don't want to play for this team and then having to come back. You know what I mean? I think the one I think of is Granit Xhaka at Arsenal. He's actually over years of hard work and some decent performances he has kind of repaired that relationship with the fans and there are people that are always going to love Cristiano Ronaldo of course but his attitude I think is a bit of a problem and it could I could see it getting in the way of the development of other players and you want the team to be stable and secure and pre-season they've opted for a front three of Sancho Rashford and Martial I rate Martial I think Rashford's overrated and I do think Sancho is very very good so Man United if it all gels, could easily finish third, second even. They won't win the league. Man United could finish in the top four if it all gels, but I don't think they're ready yet. I I might eat my words on that one. And had Arsenal not strengthened in the way that they had, I think I would have put Man United in fifth, maybe even fourth. Man United could have a good season, but what on earth have they done to prove me of that so far? Not a lot. I think Eric Ten Hag's a great appointment and a great manager. I don't think there's going to be room for Ronaldo in that team, but how do you leave him out? It's a tough one. So I think with hindsight, maybe a month into the season, I could review this and think, yeah, maybe Man United will do better. Maybe they'll do worse. And I think in January, I will do at the halfway point of the league an updated league predictions with the hindsight of the first half that will inevitably be more accurate. So fifth place, I've gone with Arsenal. I think the rebuild is going very well. Preseasons look great. Jesus has looked great. He's a brilliant player. And I don't think he got the sort of respect he deserved at Manchester City because everyone expects him to score every single game he plays. But I mean, he's pretty much done that for Arsenal preseason. And I know it's preseason, but he looks lethal. He looks ready. We've got the uh, Brazilian link up uh, throughout the Arsenal team. Martinelli looks hot. He looks fresh. And uh, I think he's a brilliant signing. I think Zinchenko is another brilliant signing. So I'm going to go for fifth place for Arsenal. I'm not going to go crazy just because I think the top four look very very good fourth place i've gone with chelsea this is another interesting one they've got conor gallagher back from crystal palace who is a great player he's again in my fancy team i believe i think he'll have a decent season could be up in the up in air about that one i also was debating between jesus and havertz on fantasy they're both eight million i opted for jesus in the end because uh, i think jesus is more likely to get goals than havertz is but i do think havertz is a great player it's just there's something about chelsea that's not gelling across the entirety of a season in the league and they're just not pushing close enough to City and Liverpool but here is a curveball I'm throwing you a curveball right now I said you've got to do it because if you just predict the, the safest option for the Premier League you will get things wrong now I might get this curveball wrong but there are safe options I've picked that will be wrong so it's just a matter of will you pick the right one third place I've gone with Liverpool They've lost Sadio Mane, who is one of their best players. I would say maybe second best after Salah, maybe third if you include Van Dijk. I think Liverpool have fantastic players. You've got Darwin Nunez coming in as well. Yet to see if he can do it in the Premier League. But I think losing Sadio Mane is big. He scores a lot of goals. He helps a lot with other things, the assists, the play. He's a tenacious player. And whilst Luis Diaz, is, he's an incredible player too. I could see Liverpool just randomly finishing third. And that's no disrespect to Liverpool, but it is credit to my second place team, Tottenham. I think they're a dangerous proposition. Conte has got things going. Harry Kane is looking ready, looking like he wants to play for Tottenham again. Even Eric Dyer looks good. Eric Dyer has made it into my fantasy team. 
Tottenham look dangerous. They really, really do. And they're in the streak of winning. And I could see them coming second. Absolutely in no way are they going to win the league. They're more likely to come sixth than win the league. So it might sound a bit crazy that I think they finish second. But I could see them going well this year. So I've gone for a little curveball. I think if you put them in fourth or fifth, no one will think you're crazy. But I'm trying to push the boat out there and say something as outrageous as Tottenham will finish second, which is crazy. And I think the winners of the Premier League are going to be Manchester City. There are people saying that Erlen Haaland is going to flop. I unequivocally disagree uh categorically disagree with that statement a lot of people said timo Werner was going to get 20 30 goals a lot of people said lukaku is going to get 20 or 30 goals a lot of people said ronaldo was going to get 20 or 30 goals i disagreed with all of them erling Haaland, if he plays every game is going to get at least 20 goals this season this might sound crazy at the end of the season if he's been out injured for weeks and weeks and weeks if he plays 30 games in the premier league he'll score at least 20 he is going to score tons of goals for Manchester City. I think Grealish is finally going to have his breakthrough season in Manchester City linking up with Haaland. But I think Haaland, if he plays every game, Haaland's going to win the golden boot. If not, I'd probably give it to Harry Kane. But that is how strongly I feel about Erling Haaland and the Man City players around him. So that's it. Champions League. I've got Man City, Tottenham, Liverpool and Chelsea finishing in those spots. Arsenal, United, West Ham, 5th, 6th, 7th. Brentford to go down with Fulham and Bournemouth. Forest to stay up in their first Premier League season in a long, long time. And Southampton just to avoid relegation. So that is going to do it for my first video back. I will return with weekly prediction videos and everything like that and tips and all that good stuff. So please do drop a like, subscribe so you don't miss those videos and leave a comment down below, like I said, with your Premier League predictions, Golden Boot, Player of the Year, anything you want, standout player. Let me know down in the comments. But that is going to do it for me and I'll see you in the next video very soon.